Testing and we are live. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I have with us. Um, Dr. Rania, she's the CEO and founder of Oric Software. And I'm gonna um, you know, let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, Oryx, the cloud dental software. Yeah, th thank you, Bob, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so uh, we met because someone told you about Oryx and you kind of got excited about the idea. Um, Oryx is a cloud-based software. It's, uh, created by dentist for a dentist. Um, and I started this as I was going through the COI Center and I really love the systematic approach to dentistry. Um, so I, I started thinking, how do I translate that into my practice? Um, most software on the market only allow you to bill insurance, to book appointments, but there was nothing really made for a clinician. Um, so that always bothered me, but I was always able to get around it until I got pregnant and I was on bed rest and my practice started tanking. I had amazing associates, uh, but the system that we had was not being followed. Uh, and this is when I started thinking the practice should keep running the same whether I'm in it or not. And we started the process of creating a system for a systematic clinical exam. And this is how Oryx was born. Great. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I noticed you guys, because as you know, um, the, the other big three software sponsor my group, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about Oryx, and um, our IT sponsor, <laughs> Anthony, told me, hey, there is a um, cloud software out there that offers um, multi-factor authentication, for security and you know we are security people so i'm like oh okay let me let me check it out and that's how i got to know you guys and you did a demo for me and you know um i was very impressed with the um educational and um and and, and the koi center material that was incorporated into the into the program um as you know you know everyone has different tastes regarding software goes you can is something that's good for your practice may not be good for mine, but it was very, very interesting. Um, if you don't mind um, starting a demo for us, maybe we can uh, we can show everyone how um, how how this um, all comes together. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to make you host here, so you can share your. Here we go. Excellent. So, uh, I mean, in this group, I don't think I need to speak about cloud. Everyone already knows what's a cloud software, and I'm sure you've already told them everything they need to know about cloud. Uh, by going cloud, they uh, save a lot on IT, like you mentioned in your previous uh, um, demo. They also save on a lot of the add-ons that come with the dental software. So most of our users don't need any additional add-ons because we offer the online forms, the, the electronic payments, the review request, the communication, all of it is in one subscription. Um, and a big part of it is engaging the patient early on in the process and having that part communicate well with the clinical uh, module uh, all the way up to the practice management side of the software. So the patient has one consistent experience throughout. Um, and it starts with the patient completing their forms online. And you'll see the forms are super engaging. Patients really like going through that process. And the practice can share any form that they want with the patient through the software that way. Um, there's online appointment booking. There is very flexible, allows virtual consults, allows different doctors to book different times. 
um, hygienists, different procedures, different uh, scheduling, not expose the full schedule. And the beauty of being on the cloud is it's real time. So you don't risk double booking or showing appointments you don't want to show. Rania, can I ask questions as we go on? Could you pause this or no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So this is kind of important for, for people to understand is that basically we pay extra for a lot of these things and your, your software, also other software, uh, cloud software, this come included with the price that they pay on a monthly basis, correct? Yes. Okay. Is it possible to go back a couple of uh, slides? To this one? Yes. This is, um, this is my favorite, you know? <laughs> so basically it's, it's all included. I mean, um, as far as the support goes on a monthly basis, right? Uh, yes. Backup. These are all the costs that we usually pay if we run a, a digital practice correctly. I know people save money and cut corners from here and there. But, but if you, if you want to do online scheduling, you want to have um, text and email um, reminders, you have to pay extra for it. Yeah, and many of these services are great, but there's now a lot of overlap between these services. So regardless, if they have most of the features you want, you're still buying more than one. Yes, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to kind of stress because this is kind of important in my opinion. Yeah, it definitely is. And you know, as a dentist, I always felt that we, we get nickel and dime for a lot of things and nothing is really all inclusive. Every time it's like, but this you have to pay extra for. So when we created our pricing model, I wanted it to be as transparent as we could and to be truly an all inclusive software. I know a lot of California people have this question probably in mind. How about uh, prescription, online prescription? Um, that, that is an extra cost, correct? So for now, it's an extra cost, but we're integrating with a new software that gives it for free, and that's starting April. Oh, so it's nice. truly all-inclusive. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'll go back to where I stopped. So we, we log on the communication in one stop, uh, in one spot, sorry. And uh, front desk people really love that because no matter who's at the front, they could pick up from where the last person uh, left off. And they know everything that happened with the patient, whether it's a message that got sent by Oryx bots, so aut automatic reminders for patients that are past you for their recall or for uh, patients that did not update their medical or dental history information on the way to asking the patient for a payment. Uh, when you ask a patient for a payment, you would know if they actually clicked on the message, if they clicked on the link. So, so you're kind of tracking all of that. And once the patient pays, it goes and automatically balances out the account. So there's no extra effort of someone taking the payment that online payment and plugging it to the patient's account. When you do your end of day, you will see that uh, patient X paid $200 toward their filling. Uh, I have one question, if you don't mind. <laughs> I, sure. I, like, I like this to be this way, so kind of like a conversational thing rather than just a regular demo, because I know questions will come up. Let's say I have my own merchant services um, and I'm happy with them. I'm happy with their, um, you know, what I'm getting. How does that incorporate into this? So we, uh, we use switch? global, yeah, uh, you, you have to switch to global payment and global payment is a large company that is used by a lot of dental uh, and medical uh, offices uh, and they have so many names under them. So you're very likely using one of their versions uh, anyway, and they have a meet or beat rating. So they're going to get your rate very close or uh, they have to beat what you're currently paying. Okay, so if someone wants to use this feature of your software, they can't use their own um, merchant services. They have to switch. Exactly, just for this feature. Just for this. Oh, so they could basically have two. If they want text paying, they could use global, but they can keep their um, regular so, um, merchant services in the office if someone wants to use, use it in the office. 
Yeah, I mean, they could do that. You get a lot more than just a quick tax to pay, like when you're doing your end of month, uh, the way we do it is uh, you can say, get me on the invoices for people that owe me over $10 that have not had an invoice uh, in the past 10 days um, and we're not waiting on insurance. And then you can batch email on these patients with the link for them to pay and also balance the account. Uh, so it saves a lot of time by going that route. Go ahead, got gotcha. you. Um, and this is the most exciting part for the patients. The, the forms that we created are very engaging. Uh, patients really like completing those. Like if they don't know what grinding is, they see someone grinding, they get it. Uh, we surveyed patients after completing the forms and they said that they thought the software, uh, the dentist um, is more technologically advanced and they trusted more that dentist. And that's before setting foot in the practice. Uh, it takes about 10, 15 minutes to do the forms and it engages the patients where they finish that and they get a score in four different areas, uh, their gums, their teeth, their bite and jaw joint and their smile. And that gets the patient really excited to come and figure out why they got that specific store, a score. Um, but also for the practice, it's really great because the dentist is getting on the latest literature from the COI center related to a specific question. So if the patient said yes to bleeding gums, you're getting on the uh, medication that could cause a false positive, false negative. If the patient has a rare genetic disease that could affect implant placement, you're getting on the literature on that. And it's I'm all- gonna stop you. I'm gonna stop you here because, um, you know, to be honest, I didn't know anything about the COI center. I know I'm ignorant. Uh, uh, regarding um, that, that program. The only way I found out about it because they were releasing some information during the, during the pandemic. And that's how I got to know uh, the COI Center. Could you tell us a little bit about what, I, I understand the uh, COI Center is um, a partner of yours um, in this software. And, and they are, it, it is important to talk about that because I think um, it, you can see the, the McCoy Center's DNA all over the software. And that is an important, in my opinion, I don't want to use the word selling point, but that's, it's, a, it's, it's a very important point. So you're telling me what, on the, on the left side of the screen, you can see um, the, um, uh, you know, the findings. And then right on the right, you're looking at the research done by the COI Center and, and, and it, it's being shown to the dentist to be able to help them diagnose or treat or treatment plan. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not just the literature done by the COI Center, but like reading uh, on the literature and summarizing it for, uh, for us. Exactly. And, and, and the COI Center is an academic center that, that what, what do they do? Tell me a little bit about them. I know if you can summarize it in one minute or less. <laughs> Yes. So, Bob, I was like you. I, I didn't know about the COI Center I, until someone said, you really must go. Uh, it's a great teaching institution. It's all evidence-based. It's a curriculum of uh, nine modules that you go for three to five days for each one of those very intense. Uh, but it just changes the way you practice. Um, it, it's an amazing educational experience. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, so so I, I had done many of the famous ones before going to the COI Center. And when I went there, I really loved the systematic approach. I loved how you can implement uh, this in your practice without having to do full mouth rehabs on everyone. Um, it's very, very practical, even if you're doing single tooth dentistry. Um, and then uh, one big issue we always had is getting all the data collected in a very efficient manner. So we created an app that allows you to take the patient's photos in about two minutes. And these photos would upload and populate the software where needed. So if I'm doing the cosmetic exam, I'm seeing the patient's repose and full smile photo. Um, and the exam goes systematically through seven modules. You don't have to do all of them. If you do them all, it takes you about seven minutes to do the exam. Uh, 
And every time I finish an exam, the patient would say, I've never been examined like this before. And I think to myself, you have been, you just didn't know it. Um, because they're hearing all the steps that we look for. And the software would remind you of the positive answers that the patient answered in their medical and dental history, so they stay engaged. So you could be, I didn't uh, hear any clicking in your joints, but I see that you answered yes to clicking and pain in your jaw joint, tell me more about it. Um, and the whole data collection is a bit different where the software is asking you for a little bit more detail. So if you're logging in restorations, it's gonna ask you, is it small, medium, or large? Large being more than half of the intercuspid distance. And then it logs a structural compromise for that too. So now the patient understands why we're recommending a crown on number 31 and to replace the filling on number 29. Uh, if the patient has deep decay, the software automatically lets them know you might need the root canal on, in the future. And all of this is explained to the patient in patient-friendly terms. So the minute you do the exam, and that's seven to 10 minutes investment, the patient has a report that has their own photos, their own radiographs, a summary of the findings, a full interpretation of the findings. Um, it's all branded with your office. Uh, patients understand why you're recommending a period treatment. They're not telling you, can I just do a cleaning? They know that I'm period stage two and this is where my bone is. I have that many bleeding points or that's why I need that crown or that onlay on that tooth. Um, it becomes huge in helping practices uh, and helping case acceptance. In fact, one of our uh, client DSOs more than doubled their production just by implementing this across seven locations. Um, and they say it was because of the systematic approach and because people understood what they're recommending. Uh, so gonna, it makes that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop you for a second. So you're telling me that, that this so-called seven minute exam that the software will walk you through it, correct? It's, it's all automated? Yes. Okay, and then you, you, the, the pictures get uploaded and the, um, um, all the information that you put in. And then is this something that the patient can see? This is, this is a report that's created for the patient. It's for the patient. So you can share it electronically or print it out. Uh, it was the only thing that we print out in my practice because we found that people take it back home, show it to friends, show it to family members, they go to work, show it to coworkers. They, they've never had this before. So they're excited. And we, we printed it out for everyone because people that are green everywhere are the ones sh sharing this on social media, like a great report card. Um, so, so it becomes a huge part of marketing for the practice where patients are calling and saying, I want the exam that gives me the wheel. Uh, and across many of our users, they all have that same experience. Um, the other way that our users are utilizing this feature is they have this on their website. They customize it to a case that they've done. They, then they would have their logo and everything logged in. Uh, and they would say, this is the experience you would get in my practice. So someone coming to your website, coming to the dentist next door, uh, they feel every, every dentist has almost the same website. This is who we are. Uh, these are the procedures that we do. And this is the first time they see something that talks about them. This is what we're gonna do for you. These are the four areas we're gonna examine for you. This is what you're gonna walk out with. Um, so it becomes a huge differentiating factor. And many use it for ads on Instagram, on Facebook. So, so it's a great um, it's a great way of setting your practice apart. You know, to be honest, I um, I look at this um, not necessarily as trying to um, sell it online in, in 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 social media or advertising. I look at it as you know. I'm guilty of it myself. Sometimes our exams aren't are done quickly, too fast. Um, I look at it as it making me think a little bit longer during my exams. I, and I know everybody says you need to spend this much time or that much time, 
but it, you know, during, during a hectic day on a Monday morning, when you got a new patient, things can get forgotten and having a system to walk you through what you're supposed to do and how um, you can incorporate it into your philosophy of practicing dentistry is really important uh, for me personally. That's, uh, I, I told you on our first demo, it's not, you know, I don't get impressed by a lot of software these days. I see so many of them. Um, but this, you know, when you showed me this, specifically this, um, this slide, I was impressed because I, I believe it, it, the software makes you practice better dentistry. And that's what other software, including the ones that I use, um, don't have it incorporated yet. I believe it's the way of the future. I believe you guys are ahead of the curve. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was very impressive. Go ahead, uh, continue. I just wanted to let you know that how, how, how much I like it myself, actually. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, like all of it is incorporated, home care list, recommendations to the patient, they all get printed. So the patient is not calling you to ask you what was the toothpaste again. Um, and when you go to, you finish the exam, again, that's your seven minute investment. The patient is happy. You don't have to go and write your progress note. You just hit generate exam notes and on the notes auto generate. So your progress note is done for you. You go at the end of the day to your scheduler and you just sign them on. Um, and for procedures, uh, the system comes preloaded with on the procedure checklist, but maybe Bob, you, you don't choose specific shades or you don't do step four, you can customize that. And you're always welcome to check the procedures from the COI center. Uh, and it, get, it gives you ideas. I, I like it for procedures I don't do on a regular basis. So if I'm doing an internal bleaching, it's not something I do every day. I want to remember how many millimeters of gutta percha I'm removing. How am I sealing that too? Uh, so, so you have all of these procedures embedded in the software. Uh, and then the next step would be the treatment planning. And we make that super easy because you're able to create your own power codes uh, and you could divide them into phases and visits the way you'd like. So if on phase, uh, if on visit one, I do the root canal and the core build up, uh, visit two, the prep, visit three, the delivery, I could divide it this way. Um, you, you could divide like an all on four case with two phases, 10 visits to make it one click and it would just populate everything. If I change my mind about porcelain and I want to do PFM, I just change the drop down. it changes the code for me. And I could set my duration ahead of time, like my default duration and change it if something changed. So the software allows many of the practices to move the treatment planning from the front with the manager or the treatment coordinator to the back where the assistant is looking. And we have a system. So my assistant would look, this is a high risk tooth. So for sure, we're gonna recommend a crown or an onlay. Uh, this is a patient perio uh, stage two. This, this is our protocol for it. So it makes treatment planning super quick. And when the patient goes to the front, there is no guessing. They're not coming and asking me, what was the next step? What are we doing next? They know that the next visit is a root canal 90 minutes. So they look for that spot and they're just dragging and dropping into these spots. Um, they could check the productivity to make sure they're putting it on a day that we still need that production. There's pre-appointment checklist, check-in checklist and check-out checklist to make that process even very systematic for the front desk person because I, I was tired of having someone, oh, they walked out and forgot to pay. We forgot to schedule the next appointment. I never want to hear this again. Uh, and then uh, when the patient is, if they come to the practice, they didn't complete the forms, all the forms, uh, you could give them a tablet and they could complete forms, sign anything you want them to sign. Treatment plan, you can present it any way you'd like. So it could be itemized. It could be the total for the whole visit. Um, all the payment options could be logged in. And once they decide on a treatment plan, all the uh, consent forms would auto-generate with the teeth numbers. So 
again, something that makes life a lot easier. You don't have to look for it. And part of the checklist is reminding them to sign the consent forms. So nothing is ever missed. Um, and then we have on the metrics to track the practice. So if someone says, uh, I have to check my work schedule, you could put a reminder and then there's a task list that gets created to remind you to check with that patient in two days to text them about an appointment. Uh, if a patient accepted and did not schedule, you could look at the end of the week uh, at all your patients that accepted the treatment, did not schedule, and you can batch text these patients that you have uh, a few openings next week. Um, yeah, and then we have a dashboard that tracks the production, the collection, patients coming in, are they scheduling their next treatment? Are they scheduling their next hygiene? Um, and on the reports, you basically need to, to run a practice. Great. Um, so what I wanted to um, maybe talk a little about um, what a cloud is. I know I've talked about it so much and I'm sure people are sick of it, but you know, maybe someone is um, watching this and says, oh, why do I need to change my software? I've been using, I don't know, Open Dental or, or Dentrix for, for so many years. Why do I need to change it? And I always tell them, look, um, security is number one, cost is number two, peace of mind is number three. Uh, what, what cloud means is that your data, instead of being stored on, on your location, in your office, it's stored somewhere else. Someone with more money and, and more resources can protect that data. Um, you are not most likely doing what you're supposed to do in your office. Um, I would venture, I guess, 95% of dental offices, even if they have a, a huge IT department, I, I don't think they're doing what they're supposed to. And, and, and things still can go wrong. Um, so by using a cloud software, you at least close the gap, 85 to 90% secure. The other 10%, you can hire an IT person to help you with that. Um, but uh, that's why you want to change to a cloud. You don't change to a cloud just because, um, Rania said this. My, my my software is a lot nicer. Uh, I mean, yes, the, the, I, I like I like the software, but the concept of cloud is what you're supposed to buy into, and then you decide which software is good for you. What I wanted to ask you um, about was um, how. Um, I'm really intrigued by this Coist Center material being integrated into the software. Um, uh, how often is this updated? Um, the, uh, for example, you said when you have, um, you're giving a patient a report about gum disease, Coist Center material is right next to it. Is that, is that how it works? Are, are, is some of that given to the patient or is that for the doctor to be, uh, to be helping the doctor basically? So uh, a lot of it, uh, there's, the, there's a lot of eye icons where you would click and read the literature. So let's say the uh, insurance company denies something. You could just go copy that and say, I did that online because that's the literature that supports it. Uh, so this is part of the process, um, giving some forms to the patient, uh, informed consent forms. We update these every year after the COIS annual symposium. Um, the medical and dental history update and literature that happens. So every year there's an annual symposium in July and John looks at all the literature that happened in the year and does like three days, a huge update. Um, and uh, typically he gives me the material either right before or right after the symposium and it gets updated throughout the software. Okay, so that's another advantage of the uh, cloud software is that there are no more CDs or DVDs coming in the mail that you have to update and people put it on their desk and it takes another six months before they update it. This is done automatically for cloud software. You guys do it in the middle of the night and you wake up in the morning and when you log in, you have the, the, new, um, the new material. Exactly. You get a newsletter that this got updated. Okay, great. And um, um, I know we have a um, group um, discount that you gave uh, our, our members. We'll put it's in the post. They can read it. Um, uh, are there any contracts, anything with your with your software that if someone signs in, uh, how does that work? 
So typically the first year, we do a contract for a year just because we spend a lot of time and resources with you uh, in the early days to move your data, to train you on the software, to train the team members, and we don't charge for it. Uh, so, so a big part of that is to cover us for that part. But uh, I'm happy to say we have very, very few people that left us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, uh, the whole concept of signing on for a software is that you want to do your research before you sign on. When you sign on, you, that means you've decided to say it's, it's a difficult process. And anybody who tells you it's not, it's easy to change from software to software is, uh, is not being honest. So it's a difficult process. I usually tell people three to six months of um, uh, heartache. And then after that, you should be good to go. Um, as far as the uh, conversion goes, I know you guys have a nice special again for our group. How Can you convert from most software to your software? Yeah, most US and Canadian software convert very easily to Oryx. Um, so, so I think what you said, it's not an easy process. You need to get the buy-in of the team. If the team is not on board, it's not a great uh, <laughs> process for you or for your team members. So, so I would say explain to your team why you want to go cloud why you want to move to that specific software, how the software could elevate the practice and the patient experience, um, get them excited about it and the, set their expectations straight on them. It's going to be painful at first, but it's well worth it at the end. And then when they see all the time that they save by patients completing the forms ahead of time, by having that literature, by having the payments come in automatically. Like someone sent me that they had the dance the first time they uh, did their end of day and they saw that they got $3,000 from online payments that they didn't have to bother <laughs> to call any patients. Uh, so, so it's worth it at the end, but anyone that is, I mean, I tried to move from, uh, from iPhone to Android, that was a disaster. <laughs> Um, so, um, I mean, I'm, I have things to say about that, but I'm not an iPhone person. But anyways, yeah, you know, <laughs> what I tell people is, um, you know, a lot of people talk to me uh, privately and, and sometimes publicly. They're like, oh, I don't want to deal with it. My, my front desk is this uh, lady who is in her 50s, doesn't want to learn a new. So, and I tell them, you know, if you let your team decide what's best for you and for your practice, um, then you've got other problems, you know. Um, this um, threat of ransomware is only going to get worse. Um, we are easy targets. They know we need our data. They will lock us out. They will, they will destroy your backups first before they lock you up. And, and it's coming. I don't want to scare anyone, but I, we have members. Maybe they're listening to right now. We have members in our group that I know that have spent anywhere from 10000 so all the way up to $120,000 to get their data back. And um, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that to think about. Um, I always tell people, if you've just bought um, new servers, new software, maybe you should wait a few years. But if you are about to buy new software, new computers, new servers, this is something you need to think about first. It's... Um, it, it just it makes a lot of financial sense and a lot of peace of mind um, um, for 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 years to come. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, I think you answered most of the questions, and you do a great job uh, speaking about the cloud. and And I really like it because I think I see a lot of startups still considering on premise software. And I want to tell them, like, not because I want you on my software, choose any of the software that you recommend or any of the good ones on the market, but please don't go on premise. Um, so, so I think you do a good job with that. Yes, on premise software is, is you know, thing of the past and, um, and it, it will go away, but companies are not spending money on their, on their other software. Everybody's spending money on their cloud software right now. So, okay, great. It was very nice talking to you. And um, we have some people watching and hopefully if they have any questions, they can post in the Oryx um, post that we've made. I'll, I'll bump it up again and maybe you can answer. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for everyone watching and we'll see you soon.